Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So uh, this is the practical part of the setting time of concrete test. Um, uh, so we need first to prepare the uh, equipment and uh, we need first to prepare the equipment. What are we going to use? Our tools that will help us in doing this test. So uh, in order to do this, uh, now we have received the sample in office okay the sample as you can see it's in wrapped in plastic bags and it's closed so that air water nothing can uh, reach it um, speaking of sampling the sample of concrete should be representative from the batch and um, it shall be stored in non-absorptive and uh, let's say uh, watertight watertight containers why I am using plastic bag air water nothing can escape or enter okay it's the, like the best available solution we have and it's tied well while you are in the site okay while you are in the site you have to maintain the sample away from the Sun in the shade okay so this test will be done let's say uh, according to site situations the test can be done both in field uh, conditions and in site conditions. We are going to do it in uh, field in uh, according to field conditions. Field conditions, uh, what does it mean? It means that it will have we'll do the test in the same temperature as outside, same temperature, same humidity as outside. Okay. So Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I have the sample here, and I need. Uh, molds we discussed before on the molds and we said that the mold should be uh, watertight the good thing about the cube molds here are that if I am puring water here it will not escape from the walls okay it's watertight and it's well fixed and if I am making my concrete here it will stay in place nothing will leak water will not leak from there so it's a good option it also satisfies the requirement for the mold. If you will go back to the standard, the standard are saying something about, uh, let's say, uh, the container. It says something about the container that it should be uh, with certain dimensions. Minimum length is, uh, minimum width is 150 millimeter, minimum length is 150 millimeter. Okay, so the cube mold satisfies this which is a good part. You can refer back to the standard and see what are the numbers. Also, uh, when I am filling the concrete inside, I should not, you know, I should not wipe the walls with oil. Don't put oil. Don't put oil on the walls of the container. Okay. What are the equipment you need to have? You need to have uh, the number four sieve or 4.75 millimeter sieve this is the one and you will be you need also tamping rod you need thermometer but mainly mainly i need the sieve and surface beneath it i can by the way i can sieve over the plastic bag possible i can also sieve as here i can sieve inside the plast inside the metal uh, tray that i have here also possible the thing is that I need to sieve over, over non-absorptive surface. We have been in this before, but inshallah this time we'll make it uh, clear. And uh, uh, we said, again we said the sample sh shall be inside, stored in the shade. Okay. Once the sample arrives here, we will start by first what? By sieving. The test will be done to, uh, not to the concrete itself. We will not uh, put the concrete and test it. No. We will sieve the mortar, I mean we will sieve the concrete through the sieve. So, we will first bring uh, this, we call this operation wet sieving. Wet sieving, why? Because the concrete is wet. And I will be pushing the concrete through the holes or the openings so that the mortar will come out. Then, after that, I'm going to take the mortar, okay? I'm going to take the mortar and place it inside the mold. 
I'm just explaining very fast because of the video. After that, we'll take it slowly, wise, slow ways. So, we will collect the mortar as a lump. We will we will remix it well, and then we will what? We will put it inside the container. We will uh, remove. We will try to remove all air uh, entrapped inside the container or the concrete. How is that? We have several methods. We can uh, using the tamping uh, bar by rocking the container back and forth on the ground by rocking the container we will remove all the air okay by that this operation we will call it what sample uh, preparation okay so uh, who will help us mehtab can you please open the bags and uh, start doing the start steaming So people, to save your time, uh, we will uh, like, uh, I will tell you once the sampling is okay, because I think you have other work also. So once the sampling is done, okay, and the sample is ready, the mortar is ready in the mold, we will ask you to join us later on to see how the test shall be done. Okay, it's okay, it's uh, like up to you. As you can see here, the mortar is escaping from the holes, but the large aggregates, the large parts, are remaining on the sieve uh, surface. Yeah, good. Very good. Good thing that uh, I th uh, our mix is not that harsh, so you can see it, it's not killing him to take the mortar uh, or let's say to sieve the concrete. Very good. So we want to continue this um, so that we let's say we will have enough material or enough mortar to fill the the molds he'll keep on doing this until like he gathered enough material so how much will, will that be he, he has to judge it but let's say whatever he brought let him see it whatever is remaining let's say it will uh, not affect us the more is better than this so after you complete after you, um, let's say, you have collected enough mortar, you have to uh, remix the mortar by hand, remix it thoroughly uh, inside your container or on the non-absorptive surface, and fill the whole mortar that you collected, fill it at once inside the uh, container. And we have to uh, like make sure, we have to make sure the mortar that I am filling inside must be at least, must be one centimeter, okay? One centimeter from the surface. I'm not going to fill up to the neck of the mold. I'm not going to fill up to the rim or edge of the mold. No, I'm going to fill up to one, 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter. One centimeter is 10 millimeter. Okay? So fill it in there. Add them here. Make sure it is one, millim one centimeter uh, rem will be remaining. It was supposed to be, uh, the sample was supposed to be added all at once. But since this is for training, it's okay. I think uh, that is almost one centimeter, I believe so. 
little bit more. Now I am seeing it from this angle. You know what? Fill whatever you have. Yeah, yeah. Push them, push them. One centimeter, you know, it's easy to. Uh, uh, very good. Now, we have filled the mortar here. We need to do what now? We need to, we need to consolidate. We need to consolidate the sample. What do we mean by consolidation of the sample? We need to remove air bubbles from the sample. How to do that? We have several methods. One of these, one of these methods is to uh, use the tamping rod by tamping. The other one is by rocking the rocking the uh, the mold. Rocking, yeah, shaking. So you need to rock it on, on a heavy, on a, let's say, a tough surface. My tough surface is the ground base, so it's concrete. Yeah, so I can rock it back and forth to remove air bubbles, or I can use tamping. And you can, you can use whatever, uh, let's say, whatever method needed to do that. By tamping, once you finish tamping, okay, once you finish tamping the rod, you need to do what? You need to do, you need to, uh, sorry, uh, you need to, to, to hit the sides, okay, hit the sides of the mold as well. After each tamping, hit the sides. How to do the tamping, everybody knows, it's a simple thing. But like every two and a half centimeter, make one tamp. One and a half centimeter, that's like one inch. Every like one inch, make a, what's that, uh, a tamp. One, two, three, four, on the perimeter, then to the center. So, Mishtaf, let us do both. You know, I try number of tamping, right? No, nothing. The main objective is to try to remove as much air as possible. So, from which side? I think both sides are semi-hemispherical. The tamping rod, by the way, we use a specific tamping rod. The, look at the tip here. The tip is, uh, is hemispherical, yeah. It's like half set, half, half bow. So he will uh, do it now. So every like one inch square, make a tamp. Yes. Good. Now I can tell that the concrete is uh, quite very weak. Okay, at this time it did not reach the uh, like uh, any of what we want, still very, very, very tender. Now hit the side. You can also what with the tamping? Yes, with the tamping rod. No, what I mean to say, this is by the way, this is like rocking the by the tamping rod. You can hit the side. Very good. Now. يعني the filling that's okay that's great the surface is okay but uh, let's say later time you can apply pressure okay like rock it very well or tamp it like that I can also hit it hit the sides it's not like only specific amount of compaction as much as you can but try to remove as much air bubbles as you as possible we will, we will, after completion of the preparation of the mold, we will, we will check the temperature. It's okay, yeah. Drive it through. Inshallah, inclined. It's like he's injecting a needle. <laughs> how, how much? 22.5, yeah. And dropping or and increasing? Yeah, almost. Yeah. 0.5. 0.5, yeah. Almost like uh, stop. We can take this. What is the minimum and the maximum for the temperature? So, again, now my mold is ready and. Uh, uh, the mortar is in place. Now we will be introduced to our equipment. This is called uh, a penetrometer. This is a type of device which can be used in this test 
and can be used in other tests as well but it is very good for uh, sitting time it is basically uh, uh, a force uh, inducing device I'm going to push the I'm going to catch it from this handle and force will be applied this is the, this is a spring type um, device it will apply the force through the end and through six different needles uh, or six different sizes of needles this six needles will give me sifra, uh, six different contact areas big smaller 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 up to the end so the question is um, actually there will be many questions we described it to the people uh, just now uh, one of them um, um, when can we take the first reading I finished my mold my mold is ready and everything is okay when shall I take the first reading the first reading shall be taken um, according to standard the standard is, is, uh, is it, the standard is giving guidelines on types of concrete basically uh, we are we need to have a good data for the analysis good data for the analysis it means uh, representative data data which we can develop something from i added this graph here to help you imagine and visualize how the setting of concrete occur so in the vertical axis i have what's that penetration resistance which is the pressure and on the x-axis I have time if you can see up to almost like 500 or 600 minutes my concrete is very weak it's not showing any pressure any hardness any setting at all look it's it's very very weak but after that it will rapidly start to uh, harden it will uh, rapidly start to increase and the pressure increases very fast after that and I will start getting results very rapidly so the, the standard is specifying like three types or uh, three categories of concrete concrete based on what based on setting or hardening rate of hardening so the, con the, the standard is saying I can have uh, I can have what is it I might encounter uh, concretes which will sit or which will uh, which will harden rapidly harden rapidly means uh, it will gain the, 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 the hardness the surface hardness or it will sit very quickly these concretes are which the concretes where they add uh, um, like uh, specific admixtures and uh, uh, these are mixers like uh, hardeners uh, quick sitting conc quick sitting concrete or hard or let's say accelerators sorry this is accelerators if we add accelerators to the concrete i will get my uh, strength very fast or i will get my uh, uh, hardness very fast and there is another type which is like the normal concrete normal concrete will harden after um, it, it, it will harden in normal conditions and I have the uh, late sitting time or late uh, late sitting concretes that ones which in which we add uh, retarders set retarders or we add plasticizers in this mix we the, the ready mix added super plasticizer and as you can see we are now at uh, six hours almost like six hours after the concrete was batched and uh, we can tell that it's still somehow weak i added this figure here for you also to visualize and imagine what is the difference between the three uh, different types of concrete or three different classes of concrete as you can see uh, all of them will not show any hardness any rigidity any resistance in the beginning so they will almost in if we will use the penetrometer they will give us readings below zero or maybe below one kilogram force but after that you will f you will find out that uh, rapid setting concrete will uh, will give me initial readings 
or let's say will will give me good readings at uh, uh, let's say like uh, as we said before uh, it's it's earlier than all others the initial readings okay and like in this graph i can tell the initial reading is maybe like 3.5 uh, hours okay i got the first in the initial good readings and for the normal set the initial good readings i got it after six hours for slow uh, setting concrete i got it on seven hours but this is just a depiction it's just a figure okay but it's for you to understand what is the difference between the three of them okay so the first question when shall i take the initial reading the initial reading first we need to classify this is this is say this is based on the, the standard guidelines this is what we can develop the initial reading i mean by that which is the reading that shall give you uh, let's say the test that will give you uh, results uh, by that i mean maybe you will perform five or seven like let's say you will perform a number of tests but none of these none of these tests will give you a good reading none, none of some tests the concrete will be very weak so the, the penetrometer will, will go through the will go through the uh, you can set it's okay so the, the concrete will not give you a good reading if, if not give you any reading from the beginning so what do we do in this we will just wait we will just wait till the concrete gives uh, a good a good reading once it gave some readings like some indicate uh, like maybe like 10 20 30 newtons i can feel that my concrete started to harden okay and in, in here i can tell maybe if it gave if it gave me like one kilogram force i can tell that my concrete is okay now so i will choose the initial reading or the first reading to be taken i will choose it based on uh, what does the ready mix says or what did they add this is a good guideline second thing if i take the first reading uh, if i started to get uh, good readings or not good readings if i started to get uh, like uh, uh, in, uh, somehow uh, representative readings I will count the time from this time up to the batching time and I will say if this time is very long like uh, four to six hours okay like four to six hours I started to get some readings then I will consider my uh, concrete as a uh, let's say as a slow retarding or slow hardening concrete okay in the standard it's, it says uh, that you will in the, for for these three categories for the quick sitting uh, concrete uh, which is uh, which will uh, will sit very quickly it will harden very quickly you can take the first reading after one to two hours and the subsequent intervals or let's say uh, subsequent readings you can take them after half an hour um, this i don't think we will encounter it in this country the nor the other category which is normal concrete you will get the first reading or let's say it's better to take the first initial reading between three to four hours and after that you can take the subsequent readings each half an hour that is also could be in, interrupted or could be seen in this country the third one is the uh, so slow or late retarding concrete in which they say better to take the initial reading after six uh, to eight i mean uh, what's that after four to six hours okay maybe i made a mistake the normal concrete take it after three to four hours here take the initial reading after four to six hours okay and subsequent readings you can take them it's let's say the standard is giving guidelines you can, or let's say you can take them according to what you see i suggest taking it after one and a half to uh, two hours but again it's subsequent to your judgment and what you find the first reading okay what 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 is my my guidelines 
I suggest that we take the initial reading after four to five hours. Let's be in between and favoring the uh, slow retarding concrete because the country here, the temperature is hot, very, very hot, and the humidity is very hot. So I am expecting everything to be frying outside. So we don't expect your concrete to gain strength very rapidly. Otherwise you will end up with thermal cracks and many problems. So what do you have to do? Take the initial reading after four to five hours and check. Did you get any good readings or let's say some readings, maybe, you will not, maybe the penetrometer will go through the concrete quickly and you will not get anything. So that is my advice. So try that. If you got any reading, like within this time, then schedule your subsequent readings after one, two or one and a half hours. If your concrete sat, let's say, you cut the initial reading or the initial good reading after like uh, six hours, then my suggestion is that take it after one and a half hours to two hours. Okay, take the subsequent reading after one and a half to two uh, hours. And continue with this rhythm until you reach a value, let's say, let the setting, uh, let's, I mean, let's let the pressure exerted by the penetrometer reach a value of uh, maybe like 10, I mean, sorry, 20. If it got to 20, you can reduce the, what's that? You can reduce the interval. So, for example, if I reach 20 or 20 plus, okay, and my reading is, uh, uh, and uh, what's that? Uh, my, my, my concrete is, my interval was one, an hour, one, hour, one hour, I will reduce it to half an hour. And if it was one and a half hour, I will, redu uh, I will reduce it to one hour. Like that. I will reduce it so that it would benefit me while analyzing the results. I need to have a good data also to analyze and to get the exact value, hopefully so, for the final setting time. So, we'll go back to the plunger. I mean the penetrometer. The penetrometer we said it contains the handle. This is the shaft, and this uh, these are like needle adapters. Okay. This side will go through the shaft of the uh, of the penetrometer, and this side will go through the needle. I have one one needle. The areas are mentioned in the standard. The length is 225. Uh, a millimeter which means I uh, which means let's we'll, we'll come back to this and I have one two three four and five where is my six needle my six needle is here as you can see it's uh, they did not develop a single needle no the adapter and the needle it's uh, one body for single entity so now we will go to the or let's say before that so before that let me show you the readings on the size on the side of the penetrometer. Okay. This penetrometer reads in kilogram force. Okay. The numbers scratched here are in kilograms. Okay. And uh, uh, as you can see you have to perform the calculations so that you will get it you'll get the end results in newton per millimeter square or megapascal so back to the penetrometer again now when we are pressurizing the penetrometer okay uh, when we are pressurizing this ring will go up and it will give me a reading for example, I'm doing it on the ground. Like for example, I'm pushing it through the ground and let's see the result or the force reading that I got. I got here, now the upper rim, upper rim tells the reading. This is 19, 18, 17, 16, 15. This is 15. I'm having 15 kN Newton force just apply it right now so 
Now the next step will be to take readings the through the device. Me that I need to push this uh, needle. I need to push the needle uh, within 10 seconds plus minus 2, which means eight, between 8 seconds and 12 seconds. And through the surface of concrete, I need to push 25 millimeters of the uh, needle that I have. And the equipment that we have here, all the needles are fabricated to that link, to that uh, length. So 25 millimeters means the full depth of the needle up to the edge here. Except for the smallest needle, as you can see the smallest size here, there is a scratch on the here here there is a scratch here that tells you that you are 25 millimeters away from the surface of concrete so you need to look while you are uh, inserting the the concrete or let's say inserting the needle in the concrete okay so let's take the first one uh, Mohideen here will catch the penetrometer now i already fixed the biggest needle okay the largest size needle now he has to stand up firmly he need to catch it firmly and of course keep in mind to reset the reading no keep reset it at the end yeah keep in mind always to reset the reading here it's okay just hold it hold it all the way up hold it from the handle yeah and yes there you go it's fully reset now yeah now he needs to put the uh, uh, what's that he needs to put the surface slowly 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 just just pause it there okay now it's not set. don't let it contact don't let it contact okay but wait a minute wait 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 without contact okay so what do we need to do we have to uh, penetrate the full depth of needle which is 25 millimeter through the surface of concrete within 10 seconds for this, I can, I have a tool which is the stopwatch. A stopwatch might help me in uh, like uh, uh, understanding what is, what are the 10 seconds, the 10 seconds time. It can help me for this. And there are some precautions by the standard on the location of the, of the test, of the test the, uh, point. The standard is saying you need to go away from the edge of the mold by um, I believe 25 millimeter I believe so uh, yeah you need to keep uh, there are some precautions uh, as I said before you need to keep a clear distance between the needles okay between the needle impressions by at either at least of two diameters okay or 15 millimeter okay and the clear a clear distance between the needle as we said needle impression and the side of the container by 25 millimeters exactly and not more than 50 millimeter as we said we need to keep uh, the test point or test impression away from the side of the container it should not be too close or too far from the side of container so when shall I where shall I place it I shall place it between 25 millimeter and 50 millimeter from the side of the container okay so my penetration if I'm going to uh, make the penetration it shall be something in here yeah uh, far from the edges by 25 millimeter 25 millimeter and I will continue taking my uh, samples like it's let me let's say peripherally on the on the preference of the container so that they will not exceed the maximum uh, value required so this is quite good okay this is why quite good make it vertical okay hold it vertically and push it through a 10 seconds I will play with or uh, you know what I'll play this 10 seconds uh, meter for you this 10 seconds period I'll just play it for you so that you will you will get to under, get to see what is the 10 seconds slowly gradually and let's say in the same speed of course you can talk it's not yet hot let us see let us do the first trial okay. 
okay so look I just uh, where is the start button yeah wait 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 you see ah. you see you see it went it went all the way through because you need to uh, again again what do I say you need to uh, let it go through the surface within 10 seconds if it's going very fast I will not allow it to go very fast if my hand is very tough on the handle I will loosen it if my hand is loose on the handle I'll toughen it so what do I suggest as a training just take a look on the on the what take a look on the uh, stopwatch and let the 10 second pass and imagine in your head that the needle has to be inside within 10 seconds let me do it okay so for the calculation this is a screenshot from the worksheet that uh, is used for this test and this equipment as you can see uh, there's a table uh, I have the trial number, testing time, elapsed time in hours and minutes, plunger number, plunger area, plunger reading, force, pressure. So, um, and beneath it, I have small uh, boxes only for reference. I kept the needle sizes in the needle area and I kept some notes and I kept some fields to be entered so what are the fields to be entered here the batching time and the temperature of mortar after preparation of the mold as we said as we have seen before after we prepared the mold we took the temperature we will fill it down below and this is an example the temperature was 25.5 degrees Celsius and the batching time was 8.30 in the morning okay okay then suppose my testing time came as I have selected and I have I took one reading and I had a, uh, I had a reading on the plunger um, how to fill the data so uh, I will record in the second column the testing time I will record the current time of the test as you can see uh, I recorded I did this test on 2 o'clock 2 in the afternoon okay so I recorded it here and in the third and fourth columns uh, that is the lapse time I have to deduct the uh, testing time which is 2 o'clock minus 8.30 the batching time in the morning and I will get how much 5 hours and 30 minutes elapsed time then I have to enter the plunger number which plunger have I used and for the easy reference uh, I kept a small table down below uh, I mentioned the, uh, the corresponding surface area of each of the plungers so whatever plunger you have used this is the corresponding uh, uh, surface area just uh, take it and copy copy it and paste it and then after that uh, we will record the plunger reading how much reading I got on the plunger in kilogram force the next step is to calculate the force and the pressure so the plunger reading is in kilogram force how to convert kilogram force into Newton okay it's by uh, multiplying by 9.81 okay so I will multiply 3 by 9.81 and I will get 29.43 Newton then by dividing this value over the plunger area I will get what the pressure in Newton per, per millimeter squared so divide 29.43 over uh, 645 and you will get po 0 0.05 uh, Newton per millimeter square now I have to continue my test as we said up uh, until we get values above 27 
0.6 when I'm getting values above that I will stop my test